Hey guys, it's Miss Simpson and it is time for social studies today. And so we are going to start talking about um, the frontier of Texas. And I'm really excited to teach this to you because we have some really fun activities that we are going to do this week. So at the end of this lesson and at the end of this whole week, I want you to be able to explain the growth and development of the cattle and the oil industries in Texas. Um, so the Civil War is over and Texas has rejoined the United States, but we had to agree on three things. So remember, we're over with the Civil War. And remember, that is the, the fight between the North and the South. So the Civil War is over. We're perfectly fine. And it's time to decide on the three things. So Texas had to free all of our enslaved people, number one. Number two, we had to give formerly enslaved men the right to vote. And number three, we had to promise to never leave the United States again because we can't just be coming in and out, in and out, in and out. One, we had to promise them we were going to stay. Oops. So then after the war, Texas was left without much money at all. We used all of it, but we had something. Cattle. We had a bunch of cows. So... Cattle had been brought over by the Spanish, and now they were running wild on the prairie, and Mexican ranchers brought even more cattle. So Texas had cattle upon cattle upon cattle upon cattle. We had no money, but we had a ton of cattle. So what are we going to do? Make some money off of it, right? So vaqueros, which are Mexican cowboys known as vaqueros, were the first to herd cattle in Texas. Now, a lot of you might know people or you might do it yourself. You might be a rancher and you might have cattle and you do this kind of thing. So now it's kind of cool to know that vaqueros were the first to herd the cattle in Texas. Cattle just wandered the prairie without any owners. They had no owners. Could you imagine just going down the street and seeing just a bunch of cattle just roaming around like crazy? It'd be like deer here um, with how many cattle that there were in Texas at this time. So the cattle grew huge horns, giving them the name Longhorns. So if you're driving down 730, which is the school that Silver Creek is on, at the very end of the road, there is somebody who has a long horn. So I wonder if you have y'all ever seen a longhorn has the big, huge horns on it. Anyway, so we did have longhorns. So after the Civil War, there were eight times as many longhorns in Texas as people. That is absolutely crazy. Eight times as many longhorns in Texas. So you can see why we were like, ooh, we can, we can start making money off of this. Wild cattle were known as mavericks. So to claim a maverick, we had to catch it and we had to brand it. So again, there were a bunch of mavericks, which were wild cattle. So in order to claim it, you had to catch it and you had to brand it. So what is a brand? And this is the most important part of my lesson today. A brand is a unique mark that was burned into an animal's hide with a hot iron. So it looks like in that picture, it left a permanent mark on the animal and each rancher had a brand unique to them to show their ownership. So they took this brand because there were so many cattle, they had to show which, which ones were theirs and which ones weren't. So they started branding the cattle. And that it means that you get the hot iron and you have a it's initials. There's a bunch of different things you can put on a brand. And they just burned it into the cow's skin, which yes, is sad. And yes, it hurts, but you had to be able to claim those cows as your own. So before I move on, I wanted to stop here and talk a little bit about brands. And I wanted you to, you to see some examples of these brands. So here is the website for Texas brand registration. So let's talk about how you design a brand. How did those ranchers do it? So the best rule to follow is to keep your image very, very simple. Simple brands are easier to read and they're less painful for your livestock. So if you have something real intricate and fancy, it's going to hurt the cow a little bit more. So keep it nice and simple. The brand design needs to consist of two or more symbols. So many brands have three units in the design. Few of the brands have more than three units. The brand's, rec the brand's records include the design of the brand and its position on the livestock. So let's say you just did like an LG like that. They would tell you where you were going to put that brand for your cow. So 
brands are based off of four kinds of marks. They are used alone or they're used in a combination. So sometimes there's letters of the alphabet, sometimes there's numbers, sometimes there's lines and circles, and sometimes there's pictures. So these are a few um, examples of like the lettering that you could use. If you want to do numbers, this is numbers. You can do lines. You can even do like circles. You can do all kinds of things for your brand. So here are some examples of when you can like join letters together. You can join numbers together and they make them look like real cool. So that's a K and an L connected, a W and an F. Like, a, like I said, a lot of people at the very beginning when they started branding cows, they started doing their initials. So like I, my name's Sarah Simpson, so I would do two S's on my cow when I branded it. So those are all a bunch of examples of, how, of the brand that you could make. So for your assignment today, you're actually going to get to design your own brand for your cow. So I'm going to put this website, the Texas Brand Registration website, right down below. So you can look through and get some ideas of what you could do. Now, if you want to do something completely different, be creative and do it, um, do whatever you want. But remember that you need to keep the image simple because it is less painful for your livestock. So let's take a look at what your assignment actually looks like. Okay, so here are some examples of a brand that some students have created. So this one is like a rocking AR ranch. So like that is what their ranch would be called. So look, they put like the A and they put the R and they put it like looks like on a little rocker. So that's what their brand would look like. And it follows along with their ranch name. And they explained why they chose the ranch or what it looks like. So this one is... Um, the A are their initials to show ownership. And in, by including these multiple elements, it's going to be harder to change. It made the letters rock so they couldn't be easily changed. This one looks like this, which is super weird looking, but it is the C-O-T-A Ranch. And then they explained what that brand means, what it's supposed to look like, and what it stands for. So today, you're going to get this little worksheet right down below. I'm going to put it in the PDF, but if you would rather use a piece of paper, you can draw your brand on a piece of paper and explain it underneath. So you can do either or. You can do it on your iPad or you can do it on paper. I think paper would be easier, but you're going to draw your brand right here. It could be your initials. It could be something funny. I don't really care. Be cre as creative as you want. But at the top, I want you to write what your ranch's name is. And I want you to like come up with a brand that actually matches your ranch. And then I want you to explain right here why you chose that particular brand. Is it your initials? You thought it looked cool. Um, it follows after your ranch name. Whatever it is, tell me why you picked that specific design. So let's talk about how in the world are you going to grade it, our assignment, if it's just a drawing, Miss Simpson? Well, um, I'm going to grade you on a one to four basis. So the best you can get is a four. So your brand has to be complete. It has to have a description that includes many unique details about symbolism of your brand. Symbolism is what does it mean? What does it symbolize? Is it your initials? Does it match the name of your ranch? Is it your favorite number or your favorite shape? Um, your illustration, which is your picture, your drawing, has to be neat and it has to include unique details as well. And it and it, as well as cannot be easily changed. So if you, if I was to just put two S's on there, somebody could easily change that into something else. So you need to make it as unique as possible so that nobody else can take your brand, copy your brand, or change your brand, which did happen when the farmers were using or the ranchers were using really simple brands. Okay, guys, so if you have any questions about this, I am going to post the rubric down below. I'm going to post your assignment down below, and I'm going to post the Texas brand registration website for you to get some ideas. I love you guys so much. Again, if you have any questions, I'll be on at help time at 1240. Bye.